We're going to talk about the comic book industry for a second, only because I watched one of the most pathetic sales pitches for a comic I've ever seen yesterday. And I debated not even doing a video on this because if I wait a couple of weeks when the numbers for October come out, we can laugh at the book that is this guy's desperately trying to sell as it doesn't make the the list of top sellers. I'm talking about individual comic books. This is the top 20 adult graphic novels list, which is honestly just the top 20 graphic novels. They put adult on here to kind of run damage control because as My Hero Academia, an adult graphic novel, you tell me. Disney manga, that's an adult graphic novel. Now, Berserk, 100%. <laughs> One Piece, though, children's shows or books. That, that's, what, that's what One Piece and My Hero Academia are, even if you like them. And, and no one cares if you like them. I like them. Well, I don't like My Hero Academia as much as I used to. I got kind of bored with it because Deku's really whiny. Uh, One Piece I, I like. I'm currently on episode 144. I skipped a bunch of filler after Alabasta. But my point is, anything can make this list. The only American comic that makes this list is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Last Ronin Hardcover. It's made it every month because it's damn good. So my point here that I want to make is that this list is dominated by manga. Dominated, other than a few things in here. But even these Disney mangas are... Based, you know, they're 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 Western, but they're made in Japan. The only American thing on here is TMNT: The Last Ronin, and, and that's because it's good. Uh, comics are in, in a bad place; shops are closing all the time. Uh, the American market, I mean, they're lucky if a top seller even makes fifty thousand units sold. It's in a pathetic state. A lot of this has to do with the fact that they keep chasing these audiences that don't want them. They don't read them, but they keep going back to them. Uh, the comic book industry is really screwed, especially if superhero fatigue really is setting in at the movie theaters, and I think it is, and I think the evidence is overwhelming that it is. Uh, that's pretty much a death blow to uh, the comic book industry. I'm not saying they'll all die, but you're going to see more shrinking as time goes on. So this book is out, and I'll go over this in detail in a second, but I want you to have an idea of what this is because there's a four-minute video where the guy trying to sell this book doesn't even explain the story at all. Uh, DC Comics is putting out a story about the Golden Age Green Lantern. It's important because he really has nothing to do with the Green Lantern Corps at all. It's kind of his own thing. Uh, the Golden Age heroes are kind of their own canon. This is a, a different thing, like the Justice Society and stuff. They're their own thing. And DC has been bringing them back a little bit. Like the Golden Age Flash has a book right now. I suspect this probably has something to do with copyright. That would be my guess on why they're trotting these characters out. Uh, so, Alan Scott, who admittedly I don't know a lot about. I never read Green Lantern, Golden Age books. I've read a couple, like, the Justice Society books, but that's it, really. Uh, so, I don't know a lot about this character. I do know they retconned him to be gay, and you know they did that just to make a Golden Age character gay, and then they could say, look, we've had this character since the, the 40s and the 50s. He was gay. Somebody said he had a wife and kid. I don't know if that's true or not. But there's a story coming out. They're bringing him back. And basically the plot is he gets blackmailed into gay sex by J. Edgar Hoover, who has 
uh, <laughs> he has photos of him and his boyfriend. And his public perception is that he's, you know, straight. So, J. Edgar Hoover's like, you know, you can bring your combat boots right here. That's the story. Uh, how does Alan Scott get out of this mess? Uh, that's it. DC Comics, once again, proving themselves a one-trick pony. Uh, the reason they're doing this story, by the way, is because they want to get news uh, news outlets to pick it up and promote it for sales. Uh, that didn't happen this time. That did not happen this time. Uh, no one's talking about this story. So Tim Sheridan, the writer of the comic, came out and basically begged people to buy his book because it's LBGT representation, and he wants to give Comicsgate a big L. Comicsgate doesn't even really roast mainstream comic books anymore. If anything, Comicsgate has kind of went in its own direction now, doing its own thing. Now, a lot of us used to roast mainstream comics because they're terrible. They're terrible. But eventually, a lot of us just gave up doing that and and moved on because there's just no there's there's just no fixing mainstream comics. They're still doing this shit. So the reason that this guy's doing this is because he wants people to talk about the book. He wants reactions. Uh, that way it gets promoted. That's why I debated even doing this video. But now I've explained the story and what's going on. It took a few minutes. The fastest I could get through that shit. But I'm going to play you a little bit of this video now. Listen to this pathetic rant. Two, I'm not going to play all of it. But two minutes and 19 seconds. He never tells you the story of this book. I think that that's important to tell you. He never explains the story of this book. Ever. But listen to this. Scott, the Green Lantern, and I just opened up a box of advanced copies of issue one, which look amazing. This is the main cover, which also gets a virgin foil variant, and that's by the great and powerful David Talaski. There's also two other amazing variants, one by John K. Snyder III, and this beautiful portrait by Nick Robles. I am here to ask you a favor. The book comes out next DC Tuesday, October 24th, but already the haters and the queer phobes are out in force, doing everything they can to see that this book tanks. They use now, I wanted to chime in here, and it might be hard to hear this. Also, he's locked replies. I wanted to just chime in real quick and say no one's been talking about this stupid book. Uh, there's been maybe one article on Bounding Into Comics about it. I don't even think anyone made videos on it. Nobody's actually talking about this book at all. Uh, but he claims they are. They're not. And he will show no evidence of that. He'll show no evidence of haters. He just says, trust me, bro. I think that that's important. But anyway. Use code and they make it sound like they have legit problems with a book they haven't read yet. But the truth is, they just don't like that there's a queer hero in the upper ranks of the DCU. The only way... We no one said anything about this. It's been like that for a long time. Uh, Alan Scott, the retcon, has been a thing for a while, and no one's ever talked about it. Mostly because no one gives a shit about Alan Scott. Uh, they haven't used him since the Golden Age, really, other than a few things here and there. We can shut these people down is to make this book an undeniable success. The only way to prove to the, all the big publishers that there's a huge market for authentic stories about LGBTQIA plus characters uh, and that these stories are for everyone is to buy the heck out of books like this. So these books don't sell. And it's mostly because of the fact that every time that they put one of these characters in a book at the front, it's never about the, the character and their journey and the story. It's always about the identity of the character, and it's always focused around sex in, in some fashion. Uh, Sensational Iceman, all about him and his boyfriend. That's the entire book. And doing uh, stereotypical things. Even this book, it's not about him doing something. It's about him getting blackmailed into sex with J. Edgar Hoover. This one's only six issues, and each one has a few variants. So I'm asking... If you have the means, buy them up. Buy extras to give to people you think really need to read it. 
Now, you might say this sounds like a great way for Tim Sheridan to make a bundle in royalties. Well, no, I won't make a penny because every single royalty I receive from these six issues will go straight to a charity that's very important to me and that I've supported for a long time, the Elton John AIDS Foundation, which works to prevent HIV stigma and provide compassionate care for all communities. So I think you get the point. He keeps going, but he wants you to buy the book to stop those comics kiters. That's pretty much the story here. Uh, in a way, he's kind of grifting here. As much They like to call all of us grifters. Uh, what is he doing? He's drumming up some, some bullshit that's not even going on. Nobody gives a damn about this book. No one was even talking about it until he made this video, which is the purpose of why he made this video. Uh, I wasn't going to even make this video, but everyone else has already been talking about it. So give my thoughts on it. And I think that uh, it won't matter. It's not going to sell. Maybe the first issue manages to crack the top 50 based on this plea because it doesn't take that much to crack the top 50. <laughs> like the lowest one is like 20,000 units sold. So at, after that, I would imagine they'll, they'll not make the top 50 because I've read some of this guy's work. Uh, I looked him up. Here is his DC database. And these are the things he's written. And I can tell you right now, Teen Titans Academy sucks. Uh, Shazam 2021 sucks. Future State Shazam sucks. Uh, what other one did he read? Future State Teen Titans sucks. Those are the books that I've read that are on this list. All of them were forgettable trash. Every single one of them. Uh, I highly doubt this book is good. Probably going to be another garbage book. All of these books, I haven't read all of them, but the ones I have read were really bad. So, I mean, and this sums up the mainstream comic book industry as a whole. Nothing but a, a bunch of slop garbage. That was just about all of them. So, uh, this book, I imagine, will also be poorly written and not do well on the sales charts. Uh, the idea of the story, actually, you know, these historical books like this could be interesting. Uh, maybe if a better writer was on it, it uh, could have been a good story. But nonetheless, I don't think this is going to quite cut it. So there you go. Uh, buy this book to own the chuds. A two-minute video, and he never talks about the story at all or why it's good. No, you got to buy this book to stick it to those chuds who don't even talk about us anymore. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Let me know what you guys think about all this in the comments below. Also, if you would, please like, subscribe, share the video. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit that notification bell. Check out my Rumble and Locals, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace. Make sure to check out my Locals. There's a link in the description. It's a fun community that I'm trying to build over here. If you don't want to support me on YouTube, you can come over here. None of that money goes to YouTube. You also can just come over here for free. But if you are a supporter over here, I do plan on doing an extra live stream once a month and throwing links to the supporters so you can actually come on and have a supporter live stream with me. Also, it's a good place to catch all of my content. You don't have to worry about notifications like YouTube. They'll definitely work over here. So come check out my locals.